Ready, go! 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 Oh, we all was on the table. Jerry. Big Daddy. Cataret. In my opinion, one of the most interesting arm wrestlers in the game. Widely considered to be number two in the world after his recent victory over Gennady, Jerry has brought the flop wrist press into the spotlight in a way that no other arm wrestler has. And in this video, we're going to take a look at just how he does it. Let's get into it. Take it, back, take it. All right, first of all, I don't know Jerry's cranial circumference, but Engin, if you're listening, we are getting dangerously close to needing larger helmets. I also think they should be required to arm wrestle in them. All right, with that out of the way, welcome back LTA crew for another How They Do It episode. This time, we're looking at Jerry Cataret. Now, a lot of people think Jerry Cataret's ace move is his flop press. That's actually not the case. If you talk to him, which I have, he'll tell you this is his ace move. No flopping, just pressing. In fact, in an interview with Neil Pickup a few years ago, Jerry said if he can get to this position, he doesn't think anyone can stop him. All right, let's watch that round back in slow motion and notice you'll never see Jerry going anywhere near a flop. Instead, you're gonna see him cut off Matt Mast's lane by supinating in and using those bottom two fingers to stop Matt's top roll. So you can see Jerry shoots in, totally blocks Matt's lane that Matt wants to do, probably a low hand top roll here. Stops him in his tracks, gets his wrist flexion, and then here comes that press, and you're going to feel all 340 pounds of Jerry here. Straight to the pin pad. I've been very fortunate to train with Tim Bresnan, and what he always preaches is flexion of the bottom two fingers. And this is exactly why. You can see that's where Matt's going to be attacking with his low hand top roll. You'll know that if you watch my How Matt Mask Does It video. But when Matt comes up, Jerry's supinating in, and it's these bottom fingers that are going to sink that hook and get that wrist flexion and then Jerry of course throws his shoulder behind it to turn it into a press but that's really what it comes down to I mean not that the other fingers aren't important to train but if you can get those bottom fingers really strong and get a nice bite at the low part of your opponent's hand it's going to be exponentially more difficult to top roll you okay so where does all the flopping come in well, smart pullers like Ryan Espy here knows where Jerry's strong is in that press with wrist flexion and his shoulder behind his arm. And so he wants to keep Jerry as far away from that as possible. And just watch the start here. Ryan is going to rip back as hard as possible to keep Jerry's hand away from his shoulder. Here we go. See that? I mean, right off the start, the first thing Ryan does is just pull backwards. Let's see if we can play that one more time. Just look at the drag back. That's all Ryan cares about, and sure enough, he gets Jerry outside of his shoulder, and now Jerry kind of has to flop from here. Again, Jerry would much rather be on his side of the table. If you can see my cursor here, we are actually fighting over Ryan's elbow pad. That's how far back he dragged. Jerry would much rather have it be the other way around, be fighting over his own elbow pad with his wrist flexion and pressing. However, when you have giant super heavyweights doing that right at the start of the match, there's a good chance you're going to lose your hand and now you could try to prevent that and try to fight more center table to keep your wrist flexion. Jerry opts instead to let the hand go and continue driving forward with his forearm and that's how you end up in that classic Jerry Cataret flop press position. Now you might be thinking, I swear I've seen Jerry give up his hand right off the start on purpose. And that's true, especially after the first round. If Jerry knows that the hand's going to go anyway and his opponent's going to just rip backwards. Well, at that point, he might as well get the best start he can with the understanding that he's going to be in a flop press anyway, and there are some advantages to that. So here's one example of Jerry committing to the flop press off the start, because we're on round three here, so Jerry knows what this match looks like, and he might as well get the best position he can in a flop press, knowing that it's going to go there anyway. So we can see Jerry shoot in for that flop press, using those bottom fingers to contain as best as possible. And this is Jerry's game. He's very smart about this. He's looking for opportunities to surge, waiting for Ryan to let up a little bit. And there you have it. Finds an opportunity, gets the pin. Now you couldn't really see it when Jerry was on the other side of the table, but check out how he sets up. He actually puts his foot up on the side of the table, really contorts himself so that there's already tension. His body wants to rotate. Then as soon as the go happens, he sends it. Now, one other benefit of the flop press is that it allows you to get your forearms a free two inches toward the winning side of the table right off the start. Now, let me explain. When you're in the start, as soon as the ref says go, 
You let your hand go, but you push your forearm forward. Can you see that? My forearm gains a couple inches before there's actually any tension in the match. The match would stop right there. And I'm now on the offensive side of the table. I get my shoulder behind it and I start applying tons of pressure. So that's another benefit. And here I am here, flop pressing my way to a podium finish at IFA Worlds in 2021. So it's in slow motion here, watch. Right off the start, I push my forearm forward as my hand goes backwards, and then when Rob catches me, we're already, well, I'm already in a winning position. So right there, that's where the match initially stops, right? That's where the tension first gets applied, and I know it's kind of hard to tell, but my forearm is actually already on its way to the pin pad, all because I gave up my wrist at the start in order to gain forearm position. You also notice that I throw my shoulder behind my forearm, and there are two benefits to that. The first is that it blocks a pin route for Robbie here, right? My bicep is in the way, he cannot pull through me. He has to pull back around, get me away from my shoulder, and then go to the pin pad. And I'll demonstrate it here for you. If my arm is in this position, you physically cannot pull me up and through. My forearm muscle, my bicep muscle, just get mushed together and you cannot get through that. You have to pull out and then around. And on top of that, when I have this position, I can use my core strength because when I lean forward, it all moves together as a single unit. So let's watch that again from the top in slow motion. You'll see me gain two inches with my forearm by giving up my hand. Then I get my shoulder behind my forearm in order to crunch forward and apply as much pressure as possible. Throw the forearm forward, get the shoulder behind, and now I'm just doing a crunch to lean as hard as I can right there. If you're wondering why it fades to black, it's because this is actually from my intro. And ironically, so is this. Me and Jerry are both Massachusetts natives, so I've got to grip up with him a number of times, and he's an awesome dude, great to train with. Okay, let's put a bow on this whole thing by looking at the final round of Jerry versus Gennady, and I've actually spoken with Engin, and he's cool with using a round for something like this. He just obviously doesn't want people ripping off the entire match, which is totally reasonable. All right, I want to watch this start at half speed because it demonstrates everything we talked about. Jerry in position to throw his shoulder forward. You're going to see him supinate in, try to contain Gennady with those bottom fingers. And right there, you see Gennady hits a nice low hand top roll, drags, and Jerry's losing his hand. And instead of giving up all this forearm position that he did gain in order to get his hand back, he's fine continuing to fight in this position. And that's again why we see Jerry in the flop press so much. So continuing on, Gennady goes on the offensive and does some really nasty hits pulling Jerry across the table. And this is something you can really only weather with years of experience. Don't try this at home. Jerry's been doing this a very long time. So Jerry eating some really nasty hits from Gennady and you're gonna see Jerry now start to go on the offense. And again, he's looking for those windows. Gennady holds that one off, thinks he has more time and then Jerry feels that and you're gonna see Jerry surge again when Gennady's not expecting it and gets the pin. Now I want to stress that this is not a move for beginners. When I was first learning the flop press, if someone hit at the wrong time, I would have been in snap city. Instead, I found a training partner who I knew was very patient and willing to work with me, and I slowly started learning it. And to be honest with you, it felt terrible at first. My elbow felt like it was gonna explode even with very minimal pressure. So I toned it down, went little by little. Each practice, it felt a little bit better, and then run that over the course of a year and a half, two years, I can now comfortably commit to a flop press off the start. But again, do not do that if you are new. Before I sign off, if you want to support the channel, of course, hitting like and subscribe helps a lot, but also check out my real life arm wrestling content. I have my latest product design here, the Dual Flexor. It is a two in one handle. One side is curved to emulate an opponent's hand and where you would be at the start of an arm wrestling match. Then all you have to do from here is flip it upside down, get the strap in the back of your hand, and then you have yourself a nice flat top handle to train that flat finger containment strength, which is super important for shutting down top rolls. So if that's an area you wanna get stronger and you wanna support the channel, check it out, link will be in the description. So I hope you see now why I think Jerry is one of the most interesting arm wrestlers in the game. No matter who he's pulling, it's really fun to watch because people like him just don't come around that often. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you think I earned it, subscribe. I put out multiple new videos every week and I will see you in the next one.